how to figure out who the true leaders are at your organization. Hello, everyone. Welcome to yet another episode of The Future in 5. My name is Jacob Morgan. This is where I share my thoughts, ideas, and commentary on the future of work in five minutes or less. Uh, I'm actually here in New Orleans. It's my first time here. Unfortunately, I'm just here for uh, 24 hours. I'm here to keynote a conference for AIM, the Association of Information and... Image management. I always forget that last part. Image management, uh, better known as AIM, A I I M. Uh, and I was sit- as I was sitting on my uh, my flight for four and a half hours on my way over here, I was thinking about a workshop and a keynote that I did for uh, a large financial institution a little while ago. And I struck up a conversation with somebody that was asking me, "How do you identify who the leaders are within your organization?" And uh, this is how I did it at this particular um, conference for this large bank that I did. So we had a bunch of employees that were uh, sitting around tables in various groups. And I started this conversation and I started asking them, uh, who on your team would you consider to be a leader? Um, And then which one of your senior executives at your organization would you consider to be a leader? And at first everybody said, nah, I don't really know. You know, uh, they're all kind of blah. (laughs) So I said, all right, here's what we're going to do. I gave everybody a piece of paper and a pencil. And I said, write down who on your team you would consider to be a leader. And what I meant by that is somebody whose behavior you want to emulate, somebody that you look up to, uh, somebody that you uh, want to be next to, whose team you would like to be a part of, somebody that you respect, admire, uh, that kind of a person. Write down somebody's name uh, who fits that description. Uh, Non-executive role, non-managerial role, just a coworker. And so everybody did that, and they handed me their papers. It's anonymous, of course, so they don't put their name on it, so I don't know who's writing what. And then we did the same thing for their executive uh, members. They're the senior executives at the organization. And I said, all right, let's do the same thing. Uh, Write down who uh, from your senior executive staff you would consider to be a leader. Uh, Somebody, again, that you look up to, that you admire, that you emulate, who you would genuinely want to follow if they ask you to. And so, again, everybody did that, and they handed it in to me. And lo and behold, as I started to go through these names, some very common threads started to appear. Uh, So the first is that when it came to uh, identifying who the leaders were on people's respective teams, uh, although these conversations weren't happening in these teams, the same names kept popping up. Uh, It would be, oh, Bob here or Eric over there. And I would say, well, look, guys, you collectively already know who the leaders are within your organizations. You just don't talk about it. You just don't publicly say anything about it. And so that's a problem. This is what you guys need to do. You need to, now that you know who those leaders are, uh, you need to go to them. And those are the people that you need to consider uh, making managers. Those are the people that you need to groom and grow. Uh, Those are the people that others are willing to follow. Those are the people that should be leading the organization. And then we did the same thing for the executive team. And again, lo and behold, some very common names started to appear. Uh, and surprisingly enough, the it wasn't really the CEO that would keep coming up as being a true leader. It would be somebody uh, in maybe security or in IT or somebody in marketing. But again, these common names would keep popping up. And that tells me that collectively the organization does know who the true leaders are, uh, both from an executive level and from a non-executive, non-managerial level. Um, So ultimately, how do you find out who the true leaders are within your company? You just ask. Uh, You can do this very simple exercise. Make it anonymous. That is very, very important. But ask your employees. Put put down a name in a a, a bucket, uh, collect it, uh, open it, and figure out who are your employees collectively telling you are the people that they look up to and admire and respect uh, and whose team they want to be a part of. Do the same thing for your executives. And then you can turn these things into programs. You can find out who these true leaders are and make them the evangelists of the organization. Have them lead teams. Uh, When it comes to the executive members, these are the people that can be um, uh, responsible for rolling out internal campaigns that you have uh, around new technologies or new initiatives. These should be the people that are the face of these programs. Uh, I guarantee you, if you ask your employees, they will tell you who the true leaders are at your organization. The question is, are you actually going to ask them? So are you going to take that next step and ask your employees to identify who those true leaders are? Uh, That's something that a lot of organizations are scared to do. That's the step that they are scared to take. So it's not a matter of how do we um, 
you know, locate and find these leaders because they are there. It's a matter of asking employees to actually uh, identify them for you. That's something that I think we need to focus on. Curious to hear what you think. Leave me a comment below. Uh, if you want to get access to more of these videos and uh, podcasts, newsletters, articles that I'm doing around the future of work, you can visit thefutureorganization.com. If you want to subscribe to the newsletter and you're based in the United States, you can simply text the word FUTURE, F-U-T-U-R-E, uh, to the number 44222, or you can visit thefutureorganization.com forward slash newsletter. Uh, if you're interested in sponsoring a series of videos, podcasts, articles, etc., email me, jacob at thefutureorganization.com. A lot of people have been telling me I need to get some sort of a stabilizer. Right now I'm using my trusty arm. There's my arm that holds my uh, iPhone, so uh, I will uh, look into doing that one of these days. But it's just so easy to just take out your phone and do a video like this. Anyway, that's it for me. I will see you next time on an episode of The Future in 5. Excited for my keynote tomorrow. Going to be in front of around, uh, I think, 1,000 or 1,500 people. Wish me luck. Hey, are you interested in the future of work? If so, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel so you can get all the latest content on the future of work and stay up to date on all the latest trends and happenings. Not to mention, you will make me very, very happy. Make sure to subscribe.